Is yes. Elliot Friedman able to hear our dulcet tones? Fridge, can you hear us? I can hear you. Hey, how you doing? Listen, so many questions for each to start. None of them related to hockey. The beard. <laughs> yes. The beard is just, let me give you. Let's see, we're checking in with so Professor good. Friedman right now. Unbelievable. So, so the, uh, the story of the beard, will it last in the season? And where, where are you specifically with nothing but rich mahogany behind you? Yes. This is, uh, this is the home office, so uh, that's what that is. Um, you know, in terms of the summer, like, I'd wear it into the season, but in the past I've been told that's not happening. We'll see if anything's changed. Ooh, I like it, Beard. I like it. If Looks someone good. tells you you can't have it, can we shave you again? <laughs> yeah, if you guys want to, absolutely. All right, yeah. we'll, we'll figure that out. We, last time, should we provide context for those people who Maybe. don't know Sorry. that we raised money okay, for charity? Okay, let me provide. Hold on, let me, pro shaving let me provide the context. Oh, okay, we once shaved him, <laughs> <laughs> and it was glorious. It was. There's glorious. your context. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, Fridge. Well, we did uh, raise some great money for charity. Uh, we you know were... what it was? It was uh, Scott Oaks charity Correct. event, yeah. and which, by the way, is on Wednesday night in uh, Winnipeg. Okay, awesome. It's, that Ron McLean and uh, Jan Arden are hosting, and uh, I'm much lower on the marquee. I'll tell you that much. Uh, I'll be there for you. Still my favorite Jan Arden song. <laughs> Love Jan Arden. Uh, all right, Fridge, let's go. Uh, let, let's dive into the uh, Canuck story here that you broke on Friday. Um, I can only imagine what your mentions were like from Canucks Nation after <laughs> tweeting that piece of news out. What was the reaction uh, in terms of what you can tell us on a family program on national television? <laughs> You know, sit in the summer, I really don't check my mentions. So to be honest, I didn't, you know, really look at it too hard. Uh, now, uh, someone who did look told me it wasn't as bad as he thought it was going to be. Um, I think people understood that, you know, if you're going to, Jim Benning was going into the last year of his, of his ex current contract. You're kind of in a position in this league, if you don't give your general manager a vote of confidence, it's not a good thing for your team. So I don't think a lot of people were actually surprised. I, I think that if people were surprised about anything, it was the term. Uh, I understand it's a, it's a three-year extension, next year plus three more years. I think if anything surprised people, it was that. I think people thought if he was getting an extension, it might be one year or two more. But three years is a very big vote of confidence, and, and I know what it really stems from as I've had more time to look into it, is they look at Pedersen, they look at Hughes, they look at Besser, and they just think that they, they believe in his core, and now he's got to build around them. And part of that, too, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Frege, I know that Canucks fans weren't happy for the most part, but Jim Benning has done a pretty good job of making his boss happy, hasn't he? Well, I, I, think, that, I think that if you look at this, this league right now, you have to draft and develop well. And, you know, there have been some questions about their development in Utica. That hasn't always been easy. Um, but when you take a look at the way they've drafted, especially in the first round, I mean, the guy you're showing right now could be the best player in his draft, and he was taken uh, fifth overall. The guy you're showing right now is a pick in the 20s, and he looks like he's going to be a heck of a goal scorer. And, you know, Quinn Hughes, I think we're all very curious to see about where he's going to be uh, in his first full season. I, I think if there's a question about Benning, I mean, the one move that, that he made last year that I I remember when it happened, I was like, ooh, that's a, that's a huge risk, was J.T. Miller. Not because of J.T. Miller, the player, but because there's an unprotected first-round pick potentially in the next two years they could be giving up. You know, we all saw what happened to Ottawa. They never imagined they'd be in that position, but they were. And I, I think that is... That's the move that I look at and say that's the gamble. But I, I think that he got the vote of confidence because of the way he's drafted. What message, Frege, does this send if you're the Aquilinis to Camp Besser as the negotiation continues? Or am I reading too much into that? I, I think you're reading too much into that. Like, uh, like even if Jim Benning hadn't been extended, they have to get... Uh, the Besser thing done. I, I don't. I don't think one thing has anything to do with the other. And you know, I think the other thing that you know, that a couple of people pointed out, and I did mention it on radio last week, is that you know the Aquilini family, the owners of the Canucks, have shown that they're not afraid to eat term if they have to. If they feel that a mistake has been made, they will make their change 
uh, you know, in terms of firing people with term on it. But I, I when when they are and you know, Francesco Acquini said at the draft he believes in the path and he thinks the worst is over. Um, I, I believe when he says that. From what I understand, that is exactly what he thinks. Uh, moving on to Patrick Line, his comments to Chris Johnston this week caused a bleep storm in Winnipeg. What do yeah. you make of him saying you never know where you're going to play next year? Well, I think that confirms that that some things that we've kind of been hearing and speculating about since the summer that I, I think this is about more than just money. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, I'm sure he's asking for a big number. A lot of these guys are and and I don't think that that should be a surprise or anything odd to anyone. But I, I think what this is about is that there's been a question about his fit on the team and how he fits in with some of his teammates. And I don't think it's one side's wrong or the other side's wrong. I think sometimes we all have relationships that aren't smooth and you have to find a way to smooth that out. And I think that's kind of what's going on here, guys, is that, uh, you know, he's in a, in a situation where he, you know, hasn't been comfortable. And I, I think at times they haven't been comfortable with the, with the full all-around nature of his game. And I think they have to smooth that out as much as they have to smooth out the contract. I, I think, you know, the biggest question that was posed to me after um, I, I saw Chris's comments both online and in the video interview, and you guys are right, Chris did a great job with that, um, is, is there any chance he stays in Finland this year? Is it, is it, is there any chance that he he tries that? Not even necessarily because of money, but just because, I don't know, does he want to break in any kind of way? I don't know the answer to that question, but I know there were a couple teams that wondered if maybe that's an avenue that he would test out. Uh, Fridge, we've got about 90 seconds before we let you go. It's a tough question I'm going to put out there, and if you want to pass, I understand. Which Canadian RFA, high-profile RFA, is the closest to signing, do you think? And which is the furthest away? You know, I, I'm only going to pass because I don't know the answer. Like, sure. I, I think right. that, you know, I'm not afraid of the question. I, I just think that, you know, one of the problems right now, Sid, is that there's no deadline. Right. And, yeah. you know, people can wait. Um, so I'm not passing on your question because I think it's a tough question. I'm passing on it because I don't know the answer. I think it's too hard at this time to know. Can I Fair rephrase enough. it and ask you, listen, I have seen uh, a pushback from the fans. And Line A's comments started a pushback in Winnipeg. Marner, I've seen fans in Toronto be real aggressive with Mitch Marner and his negotiation with the Leaf. Are there folks in the NHL that are concerned with the way the RFA market is going? Um, yes, but I don't think it's because, uh, you know, like, I don't know if it's, I think that some of the, cons I mean, this is, this is a really long answer. Yeah. I think there's a lot of different concerns. I think it's, you know, it used to be that the, the biggest contracts weren't the second contracts. Now they are. That's a change for a lot of people. Yeah. That's a change for teams. Like, you, you think that veteran players, Tim, aren't looking at this and saying. Without a doubt, yeah. What, what happened here? So, I think this has thrown the league on its ear in some ways. And I don't think the league is going to do anything to the second contracts. Like I don't, if you're asking me if that's going to change, I don't think that's going to change. But I think everybody's having uh, a tough time kind of getting their grips on this. And we probably won't have our answers for another couple of months. Yeah, maybe we should have a longer conversation around this because I really think that we're going to get to a point where a lot of people are going to be pissed. And this could be the year where if those guys sit out, that it's going to really affect Canadian hockey. Well, I think the one thing, Tim, is that uh, I think the one thing that has changed, and, and, and a lot of people have told me this, is if the Nylander thing taught everyone anything last year, it's that you can't expect a guy who misses two months to be at his best. Right. And that's why the, they think that there, there are agents out there who believe that if some team, if they don't think they can win, or if, if they just think it's not going to be worth it, they're going to say you're going to sit if you're going to wait that long. They do think, they, they, last year, they didn't think the Nylander was going to sit. They thought it was work out. I, I have a guys told me, tell me this year that they think teams will be more willing to have someone sit if they don't think they can win. Yeah, look at Nylander's relationship with Willie Flans right now. Like, it's not good. No, it isn't. It it'll, isn't. it'll be better if he's good. But Yeah, and he might be. Yeah. Uh, Fridge, fascinating stuff. I love the beard. Don't change a thing. Thank you. All right, boys. Have a good night.